What do Pokemon cards, fidget spinners, and the Black Plague all have in common? Well, they were very popular for a very short amount of time until people just decided they weren't cool anymore. I think it's pretty safe to say Fortnite's in a similar boat, but you probably knew that before even clicking on the video. But it's like what Gandhi said, trends come and go, so you better hold out on them for views while you can. So today, I'm gonna be dissecting Fortnite. Not in like a, oh, what does the box do, or oh, what does Thanos have to do with the complex Fortnite lore. No, I'm talking big picture. Fortnite, not just as a game, but as a concept. Because when you dissect a phenomenon, you always get something interesting. At least I hope so. If not, this is going to be a very boring video. Fortnite is the type of game that seemed to be molded by a marketing department. Just think about it. It has the cartoony style and diverse cast that made Overwatch so eye-catching. It has the bleeding edge battle royale genre and has completely worthless shit that everyone wants to buy. No loot boxes though, at least not in the battle royale mode. The point is, it would be hard not to make bank off of this Frankenstein of proven ideas, and that's exactly what was in mind when they were creating Fortnite. Oh wait, this game started development in 2011. Yeah, the current state of Fortnite was pretty much a happy accident. And I don't mean in a way that your parents call you a happy accident, I mean this was actually a good thing. The game was originally inspired by Minecraft, I guess virginity multiplies, and you can see this in the game's building mechanic. The development of the game was long and isn't relevant, so I'll just skip to its launch. It launched in early access on July 15th, 2017, as a self-proclaimed fusion of Minecraft and Left 4 Dead. It did pretty well, and then somebody over at Fortnite HQ said, huh, okay. There's this game that's becoming pretty popular, the developers are already working with us and using our engine so we know exactly what they're doing. And it's a $30 PC exclusive. Yeah, let's do that except better. So Fortnite Battle Royale came out as a free to play mode two weeks after release, and was released on PC and consoles, beating PUBG to both punches. I mean, it's pretty obvious why they did it, they already had the ass- I mean, it's pretty obvious why they did it. I mean, they already had good assets, an engine that PUBG used, and Intel coming directly from the developers of PUBG. They'd be stupid not to. The Battle Royale mode was originally bundled with the Save the World mode, but the director of Epix Games decided to make it its own free-to-play entity because they thought it would stunt the game otherwise. And Jesus Christ, that was a good idea. People don't give it a lot of credit, but if there wasn't a Save the World mode, there might have not been a Battle Royale mode. I mean, the Battle Royale mode was probably a very low-cost endeavor. Like I said, they had the assets, they had a base, they had everything. They just had to code it in. Who knows if Epic Games would be willing to take on a media project. And even if they did, it would have taken a lot longer to make. And PUBG would probably be eclipsing it when it came out. You can't help but feel bad for the people who made the Save the World mode, though. I mean... The Save the World mode took six years to complete and was totally eclipsed by the Battle Royale mode, which took two fucking months. Again, going back to the they already had assets thing. I mean, that must have been such a kick in the balls to them. Now, this is pure speculation, but I have a feeling that Epic Games knew that the Battle Royale mode would be more popular than the Save the World mode. Now, granted, I don't think they planned on it being this popular. I mean, nobody could have. But... I think Fortnite was made to promote Fortnite. Therefore, it's okay for me to use Fortnite to promote my channel. See, it all comes back. Now let's jump into the game itself. Be the last one standing, Hunger Games style, yada yada yada, who cares? Now, of course, the thought on every investor's mind is, how is it monetized? It's monetized by skins, which to an outsider might not make sense. And to an insider, it doesn't make much sense either. Yeah, these skins are purely cosmetic and do not affect the game at all, and yes, I'm talking about people spending actual money. Sure, you can earn in-game points, but you can also make a pencil by cutting down a tree, harvesting the wood, and whittling it down, and somehow making graphite. And in Fortnite and every other game with this concept, the goal of the designers is to make that analogy as close to reality as possible. Fortnite isn't first the skin buying party, the concept is a cancer, and cancer spreads quickly, especially when it's profitable. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is the Season Pass or Battle Pass or what have you. Season Passes usually net you more content. In Fortnite, they get you more skins. Okay, that's not that bad, right? Well, they get you more skins if you play the game. 
Yeah, that's right. You have to pay to get the battle pass, but you have to play to get the skins. The battle pass doesn't get you anything. Just the right to play the game more to earn more skin. It doesn't make much sense, but people buy it up. The other day I was on the phone with my friend and her brother was trying to steal money from her to buy V-Bucks and Battle Passes, so this is a pretty lucrative business model. The Battle Pass thing is like if you were charged to go to Target. It just it doesn't make sense, but people buy the shit. Now, some people might say skins are a way of expressing yourself through the game, and I say, who fucking cares? It's a game about killing people. The only expression you need is a gun. How does Fortnite do it, though? How does Fortnite sell such low-value items, or even nothing at all, for such exuberant prices, and people pay for it? Well, when your reach includes middle school and high school students, you can sell stupid pretty easily. Keep in mind, these are the people who go into a full-body orgasm every time Supreme releases a badly designed hoodie or even a brick, and it's also most of the people who watch my videos, so... Yeah, they're not the brightest. So why doesn't literally every company ever try to reach this demographic? It's pretty much a game of luck. The flavor of the week isn't created, it's picked. And while yes, you can incorporate things into your product to elevate the chances, and Fortnite does hit on all these axles, there's a lot of luck involved. Notice how I didn't do a deep dive into the gameplay? It's practically a mute point. It doesn't have much to do with the game's success at all. Is the game fun? I can't really say, I'm not a big fan of online games. I much rather play at my own below average pace, so yeah, if the gameplay I'm showing sucks, then that's why, and if it doesn't suck, it's probably somebody else's gameplay, and for your sake, I hope it is. What do I think the future of the game is? I can't be sure. Who knows how much longer it'll last. It could be a month, it could be a year. Who's to say? It's hard to gauge these things, but it will disappear eventually. Well, that was my dissection of Fortnite. Maybe you saw something you haven't seen before, or maybe you're gonna take something in the back of your mind and use it to find something else. If there's something you think I missed, you can put in the comments. I mean, this is a short video. Probably missed something. And maybe you'll stop buying those stupid fucking skins.